Perfect. Welcome back, everybody, to episode 13 or 14 of the Bright Lights Podcast. Who knows? I'm your host, Deeks. Joined, as always, by my two wonderful co-hosts, Mahoney. What up, Biatches? And PT. What's everyone up to? How we doing today, boys? It's been a while since we've recorded, since we've talked, but uh, it's good to be back. Yeah. You, know, you guys are on break, so yep. that's good. Um, yep. We are in the middle of a polar vortex right now, if anybody was wondering. Yeah. It's like negative 50 degrees outside, but... Um, we got a lot of fun things to talk about today. We got some football talk. Obviously, the Super Bowl is this upcoming Sunday, so we'll be talking about that. And then we have some baseball news that I'm pretty happy to talk about. So without further ado, I don't want to waste your time or ours. Mahoney, go ahead. Jump right into it, baby. I don't know about you guys, but to me, Super Bowl is the saddest time of the year as a football fan. Um, just reliving what the Bears could have been is really hurting right now. I mean, PT, you probably feel this more than me. Um... It's tough, buddy. It's tough. Yeah, man. It, it's rough. You know, there's 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 things you look back on saying, yeah, we could have been here, should have, would have, could have. But you know what? You got you got to look forward. Like like a good Bears fan would say, you know, there's always next year. I guess you say. Yeah. Um, but th- this is gonna be a good game. You got you got the young versus the experienced. Um, yeah. I, I have a lot to talk. I mean, there's a, there's so many things going to happen. I think it's going to be a really good game. It's going to be really close. It's going to go right down to the end. Of, um, what are you guys thinking about it? Yeah, what do you think, Deeks? Look, dude, I'm going to be honest with you. When I was watching that game, that Chiefs-Patriots game, there's nothing I wanted more than Patrick Mahomes to come back and you know win that game. And We, we talked about both the games in, in, in our last podcast, but... I'm gonna be honest with you, dude. I don't think there's a chance that, that New England loses this game. Yeah, like I, agree. I know the Rams. You know you have the best offense in football, statistically speaking. Um, you have a great young core moving forward with Jared Goff and Todd Gurley. And I, I would be surprised if the Rams didn't win a Super Bowl in the next five years, just because of how young and talented that, that core is, and they, yeah. obviously they have that offense and everything, but. There, I don't think there's a chance New England loses this game, dude. It's Tom Brady. I understand he's 5-3 and three in Super Bowls all time, which, you know, isn't really ideal of a record. But, you know, I mean, it, he's he's the GOAT, right? And you, 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 you saw what he did against the Chiefs uh-huh. in overtime. As soon as they got the ball in overtime, it was I knew over. the game was over. It was over. It, it yeah. was over. And he's. I think he's just going to pick them apart, and they're going to and they're going to win that game. So I mean, I, I know we're not on to our picks yet, but if you haven't noticed, I'm I'm picking New England. I don't want them to win, but um, it's a smart choice. It's the safe choice, and it's probably the choice that's going to come out to be true. Yeah, but I mean, the thing about the Rams, though, you got to remember how quick the windows are in football. I mean, if you remember that Vikings team last year, <clears throat> everybody was like. The Vikings are the next thing. The Vikings are insane. And look now, they're not doing anything. And it doesn't look like they're going to be doing anything for a couple more years. Yeah, dude, I mean, I don't know. Because, like, I mean, yeah, the Vikings were really good last year. Um, I think it was an anomaly that Case Keenum played that good. He's never going to play that good ever again in his no. entire career. Obviously, they had, a, they, they had a healthy Dalvin Cook for the whole season, Dalvin mm-hmm. Cook tour. Torres ACL. Yep. He he was not healthy this year. I mean, Latavius Murray played great, but Delvin Cook yeah. is still a better player. Uh, then you look at that defense. You know, you had a year younger of their cornerbacks, Xavier Rhodes, who was their best cornerback, played all year, hurt. Uh, Andrew St. Dejo was hurt all year. I'm pretty sure he was put on IR. Harrison Smith is one of the best safeties in football. He did not play that good this year. And quite frankly, their offensive line was terrible. I mean, Kirk Cousins threw under pressure, I think, the most out of any quarterback in the NFC. Um, That Vikings team is really good. They're a really good team, and if they draft a tackle or a guard and they can keep Cousins upright with those weapons, uh, they're really good. That's a really good Vikings team. And even that really good Vikings team is not as good as the Rams Uh because the Rams, depending on how you look at it, Jared Goff, probably a top-ten quarterback. Todd Gurley's the best running back in football right now. Their head coach is an offensive genius, and their weapons in in the receiving core, you got Brandon Cooks, you got uh, Robert Woods. And Cooper Cup when he's healthy, that's probably the best receiving core in football. No, it definitely look at is. It. I definitely agree. Josh, no, yeah, Reynolds, I, Josh Reynolds, you, you saw him show up against the Saints. Yeah, he's 
still he's a he's a highly touted rookie or a second year player out of A and M. He's a good guy. And then you have their tight ends. Gerald Everett's a good, uh, a really good um, pass catcher. Higby's a good blocker. And that offensive line this season, Andrew Whitworth is a really good left tackle. And then I mean, you 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 look at the Rams on the defensive side of the ball. Aaron Donald is the best defensive player in football. I don't think we're going to disagree on that. I know you guys are Bears fans. Khalil Mack is really good, but Aaron Donald is uh, – he's the best defensive lineman in football. There's no disagreeing with that. Um, Dante Fowler Jr., if they keep him, he's really good. And Dominican Sue is not as good as he used to be, but still you have a big body up in the middle, an experienced run stopper. And then the secondary, say what you want about Marcus Peters, man. He talks a lot of shit, but he's a really good football player. He is really good, Same thing yeah. with Aqib Tlaib. And I know Nikel Roby Coleman did not have um, – I mean, had probably the worst – call in NFL history not get called it was a really bad pass interference but I mean if if, if, if you remember when the Rams played the Bears Nikel Roby Coleman was a pick six away of w- winning the game yeah, he dropped he was, yeah. an interception it would have been a pick six so he's a good player and I forgot about Michael Brockers uh Ibu Kam, I mean the uh, Corey Little the Rams have a really really good young team going forward so I understand the window closes but when you have that young core Moving forward with Sean McVay as your head coach, Another if they don't young want a Super Bowl guy. in five years, I will be really surprised. But yeah, they're not winning this game, in my opinion. This is a team that I don't think should be playing in the Super Bowl. To be honest with you, I think if they would have had to go up against the Bears, they would have lost uh-huh. in in the divisional round. Yep. They got lucky that they had to play the Cowboys instead because of a tipped field goal or whatever. But this is New England's game to lose. It's going to be New England's game to lose. I don't know why the Rams are favored, but it's football, man. Last year, Big Dick Nick won that game, but we'll see what happens. No, yeah, I just want to go back and um, touch on the uh, Vikings real quick. Vikings aren't gone. Vikings no, were completely, not gone. They were completely banged up last year. They were like our Bears two years ago. The Bears were decimated with injuries, and that's what happened to the Vikings. Um, I think if they're healthy, they're really something scary. Um, that's that's what that's probably the only team um, right now in the North that I kind of fear right now. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers always has our head on, has our head for some reason. But um, that Vikings team is not done. They're not going away for for a while. If they can protect Kirk Cousins, they're going to be real scary. Um, back to our Super Bowl talk. I, I just don't see Belichick and Brady losing two years in a row. There's there's you can't. There's no way. Um, even though this is Brady's, this, he claims this is, this is not last year either. Too, uh, I think he still. I think they still go out and find a way. I think, like you said, Gronk. Gronk's starting to pick up speed. Uh-huh. He's starting to play better. Edelman always is clutch. He's probably. You talk about clutch, clutch players in basketball and baseball. Julian Edelman is the clutch player in NFL. Yeah. He somehow catches balls like it, it's unreal. It's unreal how he catches balls. It's real. It's unreal. So that's the only reason why I see the Pats, Pats win is there's no way that Brady and Belichick lose two years in a row. Yeah, I agree. I, I have the Patriots win. I guess we might as well put our picks out there now. I mean, PT, do you have the Pates? Yeah, yeah I, I, got, I got the Pats. I, yeah, the Pats. I, think, I think we all do across the board. I mean, it's going to be tough for them to lose. Um, did you see? Did you guys see, though, the prices at uh, the – what's the – Falcons? See the prices for food there? It's gonna be like a dollar hot dog, two dollar for soda. Really? Oh, yeah. That's that's dope, that's how, dude. That's how that's how it's been all year. That they they said I remember something at the beginning of the year. They said the owner wanted to do something special. He wanted to change change kind of the way that stadiums are going, and they, he he said everything's cheaper and it's ridiculous. It's crazy. Yeah, he's. I mean, if if you look at that, like this is obviously not talking about the Super Bowl, but if you look at it from like a business standpoint, I, I understand that people are gonna buy food more. Like I mean, like 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 people are gonna buy food when they go to a, a football game, regardless, especially if it's the fucking Super Bowl. But I don't know about you. I've been to a lot of sports games, like for example, like baseball games, where I've had to like where I've had to like physically not eat as much food because I can't afford it. Exactly. If yeah. I'm going to a game and I'm starving, and because I like. I want to eat the good food at the stadium so I don't eat earlier on in the day. And the hot dogs are like a dollar. Fuck, dude, I'm buying like three. I'm buying like three hot dogs. And, like, my friends yeah. are going to buy three hot dogs. And, like, in the end, it's 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 a, it's a good thing to do from, like, a humanitarian standpoint because people can afford it more. Uh-huh. But it's also a good thing to do because, like, 
you're probably going to make more money off it if people are going to buy you're gonna more. sell food. more shit, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're going to sell more shit. It's the last game of the season. They probably have overstocked products. So, like, that's, that's, that's a smart thing to do. But I think we can all agree that New England's not going to lose this game. Um, it's it's sad. I mean, I'm happy the football season's over because fuck the Steelers. But <laughs> <laughs> which means baseball's coming. It, it does mean baseball's, baseball's coming. coming. And I mean, I, I, that's probably all we have for football talk, right? Yeah. yeah um, so you guys can jump into the baseball. No, yeah, real quick, we'll talk real quick, baseball real quick. Buddy. Yeah, we we talked about this before the show started. You you said you want to talk a little bit about Anthony Davis, so let's let's talk ahead, about buddy. Anthony Davis, huh? Go, go ahead, buddy. All right, so, again, I don't know too much about basketball, but I did see that he is getting fined, like, 50000 or something for... Which, to, to him, is nothing. Which Absolutely. is, yeah, which yeah, is nothing. Yeah, he, he doesn't care. No, yeah, he, he doesn't, doesn't care at all. But what kind of intrigues me on this is that... Good call, PT. Uh, the thing that intrigues me on this is that it could potentially become a three-team trade and that there's rumors going around that... Le, 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 Ball might be coming to Chicago, which I find interesting. And and I even saw something too that um, I don't know if this was from a reliable source, but he said that he would prefer to be in Chicago um, as one of his. He, I think he listed two or three teams. Yeah, already. Chicago, he, he New York, and prefer someone to be else. in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I saw that, um, I, and also here's another thing too: if you're a team, would you want to be like if? Because there's also words that. He might just be a rental player for the year. Uh-huh. Would you want to give away some of your better, younger prospect players to be a rental for the year, like the okay. say Toronto did for Kawhi so, Leonard? So this is how it goes down, right? Anthony Davis is a free agent in 2020. Okay, mm-hmm. he's not a free agent after this year. So if if you trade for him, you have him under control this year and next year, right? The reason why he's not he that, that, that there's these trade rumors is because the Pelicans. This is how the basketball contracts work. I don't know if you guys know this. If so, the max contract is five years. That's a, that, that, that's as far as you can go. You can offer a five year contract. Yeah. The Pelicans, because they are his current team, are the only team in the in, in the entire league that can offer him a max contract, a fully max contract, which I'm pretty sure is like five years, two hundred and forty million dollars. Yeah, okay. and, and he and he already said he's he's not doing exactly. that. That's, he that's he has already no out. intentions to sign him. So if he gets traded to the Lakers. Okay, and the Lakers want to extend him. They can't offer him a max. It's a four-year deal at whatever yep. the max is for four years. Okay, it's it's, it's not a five-year deal. That's kind of if fucking stupid. If he hits stupid. the open market, if he hits the open market, again, New Orleans is the only team that can offer him a five-year, two hundred forty million dollar deal because that is his current team. If he hits the open market, he can only sign a four-year deal with with whatever team signs him. That's why LeBron only signed a four-year deal with the Lakers because that's the max contract. Now. Wow. When you look at like teams they're gonna trade for Anthony Davis, um, the Celtics cannot trade for him right now because there's a rule that you can that, that you can only have one player under a team's max contract on your roster, and that's Kyrie Irving. Because a long time ago, the Pelicans extended Anthony Davis to what was the current max at that point. They had yeah. they signed him to a five year deal in 2015, I'm pretty sure. So the Celtics can't trade for him. Um, Realistically speaking, if you're looking at the only team that can actually trade for him straight up with the assets, like I know the Raptors are in on him. They would have to absolutely decimate their team to do that, and yeah. I don't think they would do that, especially with Kawhi possibly leaving. Uh, it's the Lakers. It's the Lakers. They, they, they could trade Kuzma, Ball, Ingram. They have like Hart, six guys and, they can trade. Yeah, yeah. They have the assets plus picks, obviously, to yeah. make that trade work. Now, it's really interesting because, and I, this is what I've been talking about for a really long time, and I've been saying this especially because like Antonio Brown is in a bunch of trade rumors right now. The players don't have control over where they go. No, nope, nope. not at all. It's it's if if Anthony Davis wants to play for the Lakers and New Orleans doesn't want to trade him there, they don't have to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if 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 Lonzo Ball's preferred destination is Chicago, New York, it doesn't, it doesn't fucking have to matter. Go there, yeah. It, it, yeah. it doesn't matter. They can trade him to wherever the fuck they want to. It, 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 it's 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 the GM and, and the team's call. Yep. So if 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 it makes sense for the the Lakers to trade him to New Orleans, in uh without a third team being involved, then that's what they're going to do. They're going to trade him, Kuzma, Ingram, or whoever they have to get Anthony Davis because Anthony Davis and LeBron James is very scary. Um, 
would having a third team, like, if I'm looking at it from, like, your guys' standpoint as Bulls fans or as Knicks fans, fuck yeah, I would want Lonzo Ball. Lonzo yeah. Ball's a hell of a player. He's a playmaker. He plays lockdown defense. Uh, that's a really, he's not a franchise player. Like, he's not going to win your team a championship. But that's a really Maybe good eventually, player. Maybe eventually, though. That's a really good player to have on a young team like the Bulls that need a piece. Um, yeah, ultimately, the Bulls will take anyone, too, right now. The Bulls, Bulls need something. Ultimately, yeah, the Bulls though, are fucking a lot of reports coming out that New Orleans doesn't even want to answer LA's calls. Uh, oh God! Uh, I don't think I don't think he gets traded at the trade deadline this year. Nope. I don't think he gets traded. I don't think he gets traded in the off season. I th- they, they're gonna have to trade him. Obviously, like if 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 the dude's gonna walk and you're gonna not trade him just because you That's don't like the want Machado to trade him. situation in Baltimore. Yeah, like like. If, if if they don't trade him, that GM should be fired immediately. Like, he's a fucking moron. But yeah. I think they're going to trade him next year at the deadline to a team that can afford him or to a team that is willing to give up young guys like, uh, fuck, like, like Kuzma or Ingram or Ball. But I don't know. I, I don't think he gets traded this year, uh, which kind of sucks because I think him and LeBron would be really fun to watch together. Yep. Yeah. But we'll no, see. Yeah, the, the only thing I, I kind of agree with you. I don't think he'll be traded at the trade deadline. Um, I think there might be a possibility he's out by in the offseason. They already took him out of the introductory video. That doesn't mean anything, but that's no, like this. I think. Well, he's also hurt, so maybe that's what he, he he's out for the next month. So yeah, but we'll you, you just you just take your star player. Out yeah, of, like, that's kind of you suspicious. take your star player out of the little it, fishy. I mean, yeah, it, it's. I agree with you. He's not. There's no way he's gonna be traded by deadline, the trade deadline, but there's a possibility of that offseason trade could happen. Um, yeah, but it, it's it's something interesting, and I I've, I enjoy looking into it because it's an interesting trade piece that one is gonna find, and then two the the, the the fact that they're not even open to um, answering the phone right now is interesting as well. Yeah, it definitely is interesting. Anything else you guys want to add about uh, good old AD the brow? I think we covered it. I mean, he's he's a hell of a basketball player, dude. When he's healthy, he's a top five player in the league, in my opinion. Uh, whatever team he goes to, should immediately be looked at as yeah. a title contender. Um, yeah, I mean, if I, th- I think it's really dumb that they're not even answering the Lakers' calls right now because if they're, they're the Lakers are the only team that can actually really give them anything of value because uh-huh. Boston physically cannot unless Kyrie Irving becomes a free agent. So. Uh, he'll, he's, he's definitely not going to be in New Orleans for, uh, after 2020, if, after the trade deadline, if he yep. is, somebody's getting fired. Yep. So yep. we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. It's an interesting situation to monitor. Um, I'm actually kind of surprised you guys haven't grilled me on Antonio Brown yet. Uh, but we'll see how that sits it. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that at a different date. But well, when, we, when something definitely we, we, happens. We, 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 yeah, we, we've touched. I mean, we've we've asked you questions about it, um, but there's nothing going on right now. I mean, there's nothing really that's. I mean, we haven't heard about anything right now. Well, when stuff comes up, we'll talk about it, and there'll be stuff that'll be coming up in the off season. Yeah, so let's go on to baseball because I just got a room a, a tweet on my phone that I kind of question a lot. Um, the Twins offered Grandal, which okay, whatever. The Twins are offering Craig Kimbrell. You didn't know that? No, I had no idea. I saw it the other day. They're the stupidest organization in the league. Why? Why would you offer him all that money in all those years? It's it's the fucking Twins, dude. They have a shit ton of money, and they play in the shittiest division in baseball. Yeah, but uh, I guess, but shit. They win 82 games, and they win that division this year. True, unless if the Sox get Machado. If the Sox get Machado, what? Okay, the Sox won 60 games last year. Maybe they win. 75. 75? You, you're not winning that division with 75 games. It's gonna. It, the division's going to be really bad next year. It's going to be really fucking bad next year. Not if the Indians keep that rotation, my guy. True, true. All right, so let's go on to some other baseball talk. Um, just some smaller stuff. Greg Holland signed a one-year deal with the D-backs, kind of out of nowhere. Um, yeah, I, d- I didn't even know he was still playing baseball. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, though, I mean, if you look at his numbers, he had a sub-1 ERA with the Nationals last year. He throws gas. I so, mean, he was really good. He had an low awful risk, high-reward deal. Yeah, he had an awful start to the year last year with uh, 
whoever. Cardinals. Yeah, with the Cardinals. Um, another small one. Neil Walker signed with the Marlins. Rest so, in peace uh, to his career. I mean, anybody yeah, going down to probably. Miami right now? And then your boy, Freddie Galvis, going Fuck to the Jays. Guy. Oh Fuck wow! Whoa, whoa, wow, whoa, hey, whoa, hey. Whoa. he he he's, he's gonna be pretty good for the Jays. He's a he's a perfect Blue Jays kind of guy in this situation yeah, right now. He just signed there because he's gonna play every single day because the Blue Jays are terrible. And yeah, I mean, why wouldn't he sign there if he was gonna play every day? It was either there or Baltimore. <laughs> I All would right. rather play for any other team in Major League Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, this one I want to talk about a little bit because it seems that ESPN is just saying fuck the whole baseball thing after they just can- me off, dude. after they just canceled base- baseball tonight, which is literally all the baseball they had because they don't talk about it in any other way besides yeah. their Sunday night baseball game, which is once a week for like three hours. And it's terrible broadcasting, it's, by the way. Absolutely actually, terrible. I don't mind A-Rod. A-Rod is A-Rod's the best. A-Rod's the only good one. Yeah, He's but the only good one. That, gr- that chick, what Espinosa or whatever, like, Nick she Kirchner. knows Kirchner's nothing about baseball. Yeah, I know. Yeah, ESPN is just... A joke. It's a it, joke. It's bad. It's really e- bad. E- ESPN is basically sucking LeBron's dick, uh-huh. sucking Zion's dick, uh-huh. and then talking about Tom Brady. That's pretty much what it is. That is, that is about it. And uh, that's pretty much. What it is. And even but, in the we're, we're talking. Hold on, hold on. We're talking about ESPN. This is the that's hilarious. I was literally watching ESPN forty minutes ago, and it literally pops up. The Padres at, are meeting with um are meeting with uh, yeah. Bryce they talked about baseball like. Hold on, hold on. Big stuff happened. Yeah, okay, no, 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 okay, no. So literally, it flat. The guy says one line: "Padres with Bryce Harper," and then immediately, right after like two seconds, Tom Brady, blah blah blah. Yeah. It was two <laughs> seconds yep. worth of baseball, and then right to Tom Brady. Congrats, yep. ESPN. Congrats, That's ESPN. Is, You're losing viewers. I wonder what. The, do you it's think there. they're gonna replace it with a baseball show, or do you think they're just gonna say fuck it? They have to replace it with a baseball show, dude. They have to. Their coverage right now is pathetic. Well, literally, like PT just said, they talk baseball for thir- – even during the season, all they do is, like, the 30-second recaps of the game. And yeah, that's it. I know. It's awful. It is really awful. And, and you and you rarely see, like, on the top ten, you, like, you rarely see baseball anymore. Like, it's, it's there's, like, it's baseball just fading out of the ESPN world for some reason. It doesn't make sense at all. Dude. Yeah. I mean, I remember when we were younger, it used to be – there used to be a fair amount of baseball on ESPN. Yeah. And then yeah. just yeah. throughout like, the years, it's been when, awful. <laughs> When when we were like ten and like there was like people was hitting like fucking nukes and Miguel Cabrera <laughs> winning rounds and everything uh-huh. like that and was, people di- making diving plays yeah, like it was, was lit. Like the top ten. I, I used to wake up every day just to watch the top ten to see what what happened. Now it's just an absolute shithole, and they're canceling baseball tonight. It's fu- it's fucking dumb, dude. It, it I, really MLB is. Network is even like I, I understand obviously MLB Network is only going to cover. <laughs> Major League Baseball, because that's what it is. It's, it's MLB Network. Uh-huh. But the, the way that they cover sports is just so much better than ESPN. ESPN oh, has so many, so many shitty like side shows that are absolute dog shit. It's just, it's just, it's pathetic. It's so fucking terrible. Yeah. Um. So going on from that, going to a little cubby talk here. Um. I don't know if you saw, but Justin Wilson signed with the Mets. So uh, the Cubs bullpen is fucked. It's fucking terrible. It is really bad. And, 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 and a Cubs fan, a, a Cubs fan will be like, "But we signed Brad Brock. Shut the fuck up, dude. Your bullpen going into opening day right now. One, um, their fucking closer. What's his name? Morrow. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna be out for the whole month. So right now their closer is Pedro Strope. Pedro Strope or Carl closer. Edwards. Or yeah, okay. Or Carl Edwards. They they're, they're both bad. I mean, Strope is decent, but he's 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 not a closer. Then who else? You got Mike Montgomery. Is 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 Brian Dunsing still there? I don't know. He sucks. I don't. I don't um, think so. I don't know though. They, they, their bullpen is terrible. Their bullpen is terrible, and I love I love every second of it, dude. Yeah. Um. The Cubs <laughs> definitely need. Well, at least now they're definitely out on Harper. They they've announced it themselves. They're out on Harper. Can't afford anybody. Huh? Yeah, I know. Um. I just. The rest of the money that they have till they hit that luxury tax needs to be spent on pitching. They need to go trade for people. They, they, Who are they, they going to trade, it. though? I mean, you have a bunch of good relievers. I mean, I'm, I'm a Padres fan. Uh, they could trade for Kirby Ace. He's on, like, a $3 million contract. Yeah, but who are they going to trade, though? Uh, 
trade Hap, trade Bodie. I don't know. If 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 see if the I'm thing about on, that though is the Cubs love their guys. That's stupid. That's stupid. That's stupid. That's I stupid feel like, they, like I feel like the ownership puts too much into their personal lives into the players that's, because that's so because you never stupid. see people traded and then. Schwarber, probably their yeah. number. Yeah, honestly, Schwarber's untouchable. Schwarber's yeah, untouchable. That's, that's, that's probably their number stupid. one trade piece right now is Schwarber, and they're not gonna trade him. That's so fucking stupid, dude. That's not how you win baseball games. Is this how you win championships? Yeah. When they won a championship, I understand that they had a Roldis Chapman in their bullpen, who one they traded away a ton of good prospects for, and. You say what you want. The Cubs won that deal because they won a World Series yeah, out of it. Exactly. Yeah. Their bullpen was their bullpen was good that year. They it was had a fantastic. really good bullpen. You don't win a World Series without a good bullpen. You yeah. can't. It's not possible. No, it's the true. Giants, when they won three World Series, won it all. Oh my okay, god, their them, bullpen was insane. One of them one of them was because Madison Bumgarner turned into God. Okay. Uh-huh. But the other two was because their bullpen. Their bullpen was fucking amazing. You win games off your bullpen. Every team that plays in the World Series every year has a very good bullpen. It's just how it works. Yeah, true. Um, so now going on to something that I think is very important is the Whit Merrifield extension. They're getting him for dirt cheap. So for, cheap. He's such a good player. Oh, I, I mean, he had the most hits. Oh boy. He had the most the PT. hits. PT did just leave. <laughs> um, so he had the most, uh, hits last year in the MLB. So, I mean, the fact that they're getting him for dirt cheap is good for two reasons. One. If something happens in Kansas City for some fucking reason, they have him for dirt cheap or two, he is a perfect trade piece. Oh, yeah. When you get a guy that hit above 300 last year, stole 40-plus bags, and you give him on that cheap of a contract, the haul, if they ever want to trade him, is going to be ridiculous. Oh, no, it really is going to be ridiculous. I I understand he's 30 years old, but, I mean, he's a really good player. He's their only good player right now other than Salvador Perez. So that's a really good contract. It's a really good move by a team that needs a piece like that, uh, that needs a staple like that in their lineup every day. And, I mean, uh, Whit Merrifield's a really good player. He's really he's so underrated because he plays in, in Kansas City, a small market. They suck pretty much. But he's a really good baseball player. Oh, yeah. He is a great baseball player. I think he's actually probably one of the most underrated baseball players in the league. He's um, a top 10 second baseman, in my opinion, if not top, top five. He's top three second baseman. Yeah, he's really good. Yeah, he's really good. Um, so going on to something a little bit more personal for you, cause fuck the Machado Harper talks. I'm done talking about them. I really oh, don't no, give a we're shit. We're talking about it. Well, we'll, we'll hint it. at it. All right. But JT Romuto. Fuck no. No, dude. Like there's a lot going on with him. I mean, the Padres and the Reds. If, How would you feel if the Padres get him? I would be so pissed off. Because be so pissed there off. goes your 10, uh, top 100 prospects. I would be. Mahoney, I would be so pissed off. It, I it would be too. Me. It, it, it doesn't make sense to me. It, you, you, Francisco Mejia's ceiling is JT Real Muto with, with, with a better arm. Okay, uh-huh. he's and like not even that. You have to get like. Do you see what the Marlins are fucking asking for this guy? They're it, Mejia, uh, Morejon, and then Margot or or a corner outfielder. I'd be so pissed off. So pissed off. If they, it doesn't make sense to me. It, it doesn't make sense to me either. What else doesn't make sense to me is how the Reds are in on this too. I mean, I give the Reds straight for him. Yeah, I'll give props to the Reds. They are really trying to make their team better. Yeah, but did you see what they're asking for? No. It was one of Nick Senzel, Hunter Green, and uh, that Trammel guy. All of them are top th- uh, are top forty prospects. Doesn't make sense. I, well, Senzel is like what top ten. I think he's five. Yeah. He's five. No, he's six. He's six. He's six. Yeah. I mean, again, the Marlins are trying to catch up after they fucked up with the Stanton and uh, the – I guess they didn't fuck up on the Stanton deal because they need to get yeah, rid they, of that money. But yeah, that but Yelich they, deal they, was really bad. Yelich deal was awful. Even the Ozuno deal was awful. And yeah. the Stanton deal, they should have gotten so much more. I would have asked for the haul. I would have asked for a complete haul. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get into the talk that I didn't want to get into, but, uh, okay, let's start with, I guess we'll start with Harper, because news came out with him today. He's meeting please, with, please, please tell the news, go ahead. All right, go so the, the news. news is, he's meeting, I think they said three or four teams the last couple days, upcoming days, um, not knowing who they are, but we do know that one of them is the San Diego Padres. Uh, who they are meeting, they're actually meeting this afternoon. Is it today? To today, they're meeting tonight. Okay. Rosenthal tweeted I hope it earlier. Goes, I hope it goes wonderful. They are meeting tonight. Um, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm super stoked. Dude, uh, I don't know why I'm happy because, like, they're not going to get Harper or Machado, so... How, how, I don't, this podcast was fucking explode if Harper goes to San Diego and Machado goes to Chicago. It would fucking yeah, explode. Oh, oh my God. I'm saying, like, we both get best of both worlds. I mean, that's fine with me. I don't care. I'll take Machado. Oh, yeah, I would definitely take Machado. I mean, there's no I, doubt I would about prefer that. Machado over Harper because he, fit, he actually fits a need at third base, but... It's it's fucking Bryce Harper, dude. Um, the fact that that they that they even got a meeting fucking with him, Bryce Harper. The fact that they even got a meeting with him is amazing. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. Um, the thing that I, I want to like, I want to pull out of this. We don't have to talk about Machado or Harper or anything, uh, or give predictions because no one knows where the fuck these guys are going or when they're gonna sign. But if you're a baseball fan and you're a Phillies fan, you're a White Sox fan, or you're a fan of any team, I'm that's ready going to kill myself. This, that's what's going on. The San Diego Padres should be viewed as legitimate threats to get Manny Machado replaced. Oh, I'm, I'm, oh, I'm, yeah, yeah, definitely. They, they, people are just like brushing them off, and I'm not saying this because I'm a Padres fan. Like, if they, they, they should be legitimate threats to get him. They have the money. Uh, everybody is saying that both of them are perfect fits for San Diego. They play, they play, they have just where their team is located. They have an yeah, advantage. Who, who would not want to go live in San Diego? Like, exactly. like yeah. And, Philadelphia is a shithole. Machado and Bryce Harper both don't like Philadelphia. So honestly, dude, I don't know who these other teams that Machado that that Harper has met with. Alshon so, Jeffrey loves Philadelphia. Fuck you, Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck Jeffrey or Machado or or any like I, I don't know who's talked to him. Nobody knows who's talked to him. But if you guys don't get one and the Padres don't get one, I'm gonna be really surprised. Yeah, I'm gonna be. Really, really, really surprised if one of our teams doesn't get at least one of them. Because, then again, though, uh, who knows what's going on? Nobody does. Nobody does. This is this whole this off season is fucking stupid. It's pissing me off. Uh, pitchers and catchers report in like ten days, and, and two generational talents and arguably and Keuchel. I can't remember Keuchel. And arguably a guy who could retire as the greatest closer of all time are still free agents. Kimbrel, yeah. So who knows, man? But I'm gonna be really mad if Kimbrel goes to the Twins. Just because I would love to see him back on a contending team. Me too. Me too. He's. Uh, did you see the report that the Padres are in on Kimbrel too? Really? For some fucking reason. Yeah, I don't know, dude. Preller's going all in, man, and I'm cool with it. But just start signing just, people, I, dude. I, I, my mental, for for my mental health, I need Harper or Machado to sign within like the next week. It's yeah. not like, happening. I wake up it's not happening. Check. It, it's it's not gonna happen, but. I don't know, dude. Because Machado yeah, said he's not even close to a deal. And Harper's, Harper's going to be Harpy, and he's going to not sign till the fucking end of spring training. I think they're both going to hold out in, in, into spring training. I would not be surprised if they both hold out in, into spring training. Like, honestly, stupid. though, like, baseball needs to figure this out for the sole fact. We love baseball, and we're true baseball fans, right? Like, through and through. A bad yeah. offseason isn't going to take us away from the game. But I know people personally that are sick and tired of this and are actually stopping pay, to stop paying attention with anything baseball. They're done watching it because of how annoying annoyed they are of how slow this offseason has been. Yeah, and like, I don't know. They're we, losing the casual fan right now. This this has been a pretty short podcast, so we, we could probably talk about this real quick before we uh, before we call it a day. But I was talking to Taylor earlier, for those of you who don't know, Taylor's my girlfriend, and Nice. She asked me, because nice. cause we were talking about, like, like Harper. I, I, I sent her that tweet, and she asked me, she's like, when's the deadline for them to sign? And I was like, there's no deadline. They can sign whenever they want. And she's like, that's really stupid. And I was thinking about it, like, there should be a fucking deadline. Dude. There should like, be. I, I told it, you in the podcast. There needs no, to no. be. A- yeah, you said, like, like penalties and stuff like that. Not even that. The easiest thing that Major League Baseball could do is this, right? They could say every single player has to be signed by um, a certain date. Like you have to sign within a week into spring training or yep. or something or something. But there needs to be a deadline because I'm sick and fucking tired of – Or being, you report to tomorrow. AAA. That, that's, what, that's the thing. Yeah. You report to AAA. Tomorrow is the first day of February, and two oh, guys, God. three. Th- there's three Hall of Famers on the market right now that yeah. are not signed yet. Yeah, I know. 
it's it's ridiculous. Like you said, it's 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 losing the casual fans. I'm never gonna stop watching baseball. Yeah. As much as I complain on Twitter and bitch about how much I hate the Padres and everything, I'm never gonna stop watching them. You're never gonna stop watching the White Sox. If the Padres don't win, don't win more than 55 games for the next 20 years, I'm gonna watch them still. Yeah. I, I, I'm I'm never gonna stop watching the game of baseball. It's the biggest part of my entire life. But. Not uh, not everybody. I would probably say like thirty percent, if that, of people who actually watch baseball are like diehard fans. The rest are just casual fans that want to go go catch a game every like three months, and they're not going to watch, dude. They're getting sick no. and tired of superstars, not just regular guys, yeah. not like Eric Hosmer or JD Martinez, no. superstar Hall of Famers that haven't been signed yet. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Okay, um, I I got a question for you guys. Who is it more on? Is it more on the GMs or is it more on the players that they haven't signed yet? You you go first, Deeks. It's definitely on the owners. It's 100% on the owners. I, I 110% okay. agree. Anybody who says that Manny Machado and Bryce Harper are not worth $30 million a year is a fucking, is a fucking idiot. It's a yeah. fucking idiot. Fucking idiot. And, and, and people that say that, that nobody is worth that much money, again, fucking idiots. Why? Look at it from two different perspectives, right? From... A straight baseball perspective, Manny Machado and Bryce Harper, both top ten hitters in baseball. And they're in their prime. They're twenty six years old. They're they're in their prime. Uh, like I said, they're both probably Hall of Famers. Um, Manny Machado, just from him, you you know you're gonna get the guy's played in like uh, more than one hundred and fifty games every single year in his career. So you're getting durability. You're getting a guy who plays. When he play when when he's on his game is a top him and Arenado are the best defensive third baseman in baseball. Uh, Matt Chapman too. Um, he's gonna hit what two ninety every single two ninety plus every year thirty bombs a hundred RBIs. Uh huh. What, what the fuck else do you want from a baseball player? A exactly. Guy who's a, a complete five tool baseball player. Bryce Harper. If Bryce Harper goes to Petco Park, he's gonna hit forty home runs. Every single year, because yeah. he's a lefty, and lefties destroy the ball at at, at, at Petco Park. Um, Bryce Harper, thirty five. He had a bad year this year and hit thirty four home runs. Drove in a hundred RBIs. A guy who, 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 who gets on he base. He didn't even have a bad year. He had a bad first half. He batted like three ten in the second half. Yeah, yeah. And people are calling that a bad year when the guy hit thirty five fucking home runs. And he batted like two seventy. He's going to walk 100-plus times every year because nobody wants to pitch to him because he's so fucking dangerous. Has an absolute hose of an arm in right field. Like, what the fuck do you want more out of a baseball player? Yeah. Like, pay the man. Just and then, pay him. And then, and, and then look at it from a, uh, a business standpoint because say well, I've been saying this all offseason and on the podcast. Baseball, as much of a game as it is, it's a business, right? The owners are not – are, people don't buy baseball teams because they love baseball. They buy teams to make money. I mean, it, it sucks. It's the realization, but like – Look at it from like a business standpoint. If you sign Bryce Harper, you know how much fucking money your team's gonna make. Like jersey sales, sales, sales season ticket prices. Sales. The the tickets will go up. You can raise the food prices. More people are gonna come to your games. It's teams like it. And obviously, like if 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 the Cubs got Bryce Harper. They wouldn't make as much money because the Cubs are going to sell every single game out. They're going to be top three in attendance every single year. But for a small market team to get a superstar, that's a shit ton of money, dude. It's coming in. That's fucking stupid. Like, well, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Let's just let's just talk about like this thing with the NFL. See, look what Khalil Mack did to the Chicago Bears. Oh yeah. He not that, only but, not only made the team better, he made the whole franchise and organization better. The seats were filled every single game. The crowd was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. It was. It's the same thing. Okay, okay. Here's another thing, too. I, okay, I'll take that back. It wasn't just all Mac, but he was a big part of that. Mac oh, was part it. of it, of course. Tribute no, dude, I, you, could, you could get away with saying it was Khalil Mack. The Bears don't win more than seven games if Khalil Mack is oh, on yeah. that team. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and like, it's, 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 it's just how it works, dude. When the Lakers sign LeBron, their ticket yep. prices, you go to a Lakers game and you sit in the top, like, at, at the very top of the of Staples Center, you're paying, like, $120 for nosebleeds because yep. of LeBron James. Uh here we go to school in 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 Wisconsin. Bunch of Packers fans, unfortunately. Yep. A lot of people go to football games just to watch Aaron Rodgers play football. Yeah. Like, or, he's, or go to a or go to a Bucks game. Well, to watch Bucks Giannis. Be better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but 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 the Bucks are good because of Giannis. Like yeah, it's the same thing true. with the Pelicans. They're good because of Anthony Davis. So superstars not only perform, and obviously the ultimate goal from every owner should be to win because you make money when you win. It just makes sense. Your team is good; more people will come. But these guys are going to make their contracts back, if not make a profit for you. They're definitely um, going to make a profit in the fact just that by being there. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, if they do 
what they're if they don't live up to the hype and they just become a I don't know an above average baseball player and they don't stick to that Hall of Fame level one you're still gonna get that money back because like you guys are saying all the ass and seats that you're putting all the jerseys you're selling all the posters all the anything that you put their name on is gonna sell yeah and and I'm just looking at this okay obviously I'm most of my baseball talk is going to come from a Padres perspective because I'm a Padres fan. I've been a Padres yeah. fan my whole entire life. The Padres last year, I want to say they were like 13th or 14th in attendance. Okay, so they're an above average. They're top half of the league in attendance. Okay, they've been that way for the last five to six years, right? It, you have to look at this from like a market standpoint. If 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 I'm the Padres, you're the only team in San Diego. Okay, the Chargers are gone. You have no competition. There's no competition to put the fleet. You got the fleet, now. except for the fleet. Great team, fleet baby. Yeah. Um, they're the like the Padres are the only real professional sports team in San Diego. If people are coming to watch, if 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 if, if you're getting twenty eight to thirty thousand people every single day coming to watch a team that's going to win sixty five games, you have any idea how many people are going to come watch the team when? Tatis is up, and we oh, have yeah. guys like Harper. Mach- they're going to sell out every single game. Who wouldn't want to go to Petco Park to watch a baseball game? Who doesn't want to go to San Diego? And you already have twenty eight to, to, to 30,000 people every single day, and now you add a superstar and your team starts to win? You, you, they, they're going to make so much money. The Padres yeah. are a terrible team, and they're, I think their value is like $1.2 billion. And on a, on a team that has never won a World Series, hasn't made it uh, – Hasn't made it to the playoffs in like 13 years. Hasn't had a winning season since 2010. Uh-huh. And they're they're top half in attendance every year. So yeah. I don't understand what people are thinking. It's 100% on the owners. Anybody that tells you otherwise is a fucking idiot. Bryce Harper and Manny Machado have every right to ask for $300 plus million. Yeah, every exactly. single right. Yeah. In, in, so does Craig Kimbrell. I understand nobody's going to give a closer a, 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 a $100 plus million dollar deal. But he's worth that, dude. He that is. guy gets it in into the, the ninth inning, and it's like you're gonna win. Like like there's a ninety percent chance that if Craig Kimbrell takes the mound with the lead in the ninth inning, you're gonna win. You're, you're gonna win. win the game. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. Actually, it, well, we forgot to talk about a little something going on with Harper. Um. That one Las Vegas gambling Twitter page put out yeah. that he's signing with the Phillies, and he has been credible. He has gotten a couple of signings correct, including the LeBron James signing. He's the person that broke that. I do remember that. Um, so, and then another page tweeted that also is very, um, is confirmed is 10 years, $350 million. I mean. If that's the offer, that. he's going to be a Philly. I'm going to be honest with you. I would believe that. And I, 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 I've always been on Harper. I mean, obviously I, I had him go to the Dodgers, but like I, I, since that came out that, that, that he was probably going to Philadelphia. I believe that. I would believe that guy if he wasn't meeting with the Padres. Actually, now they say, yeah, you're right. Now if he's meeting still with meeting teams. with teams, yeah. if he's still meeting with teams, I don't think he's agreed to a contract yet because, like, Harper wouldn't agree to meet with anybody if he was already setting someone on going to Philly. But I don't know, dude. I, I don't even want to get into predictions or anything because no, we're, done we're, gonna, we're, gonna be nope, we're, yeah, we're done with that shit. We're going to be wrong. So, yeah. I mean, if, if, if there's anything else to talk about, let, go ahead. But I think that's all we got, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's All right, it. so that's, that's going to wrap this one up. Uh, thanks for listening. As always, follow us on Twitter, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all the fun stuff. Leave us a rating. doesn't have to be five stars. Whatever you guys feel. We like feedback. Let give us, us a zero. We don't give a shit. Yeah, give us a zero. <laughs> I, don't, I don't care. No, uh, don't give us a zero. I'll, I'll come <laughs> find you. <laughs> yeah, he's not kidding about that. Um, if you're listening to this far and you want to see some stuff, you 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 want us to talk about some stuff, new segment ideas, yep. make sure make sure you message us on Twitter or uh, tweet at us, DM us, do whatever you got to do. Uh, we want to get better every day. Hey, Thanks again. Go ahead, PT. Yeah, and we'll answer questions too. If you have a question about something, we'll, we'll answer. We'll answer. Slide on the into the DMs, or, baby. Exactly. Oh, yeah. So, so our our DMs are always open. If you ever need a question to be answered, we got you guys. Hell yeah. Uh, But thanks again for listening, and uh, have a good one. All right. Thanks, guys. See ya. Perfect. Perfect.